So in the corner, I've got the two phasers for resistors and capacitors. And I'm gonna draw you a little AC circuit here. We've got an AC generator and we'll connect immediately to a resistor and then go to a capacitor. And this is an RC circuit because we've got some resistance and we've got some capacitance. Now the voltage across this resistor is, well, let me talk about V max. V max, see, it's gonna be changing continuously as a function of time, but I wanna disregard the time um, and just set that sine function always to be one so I can talk about the maximum voltage. That's just the maximum current times the resistance. And the voltage maximum across the capacitor, well, that voltage maximum is going to be, well, it's the maximum current, again, times the capacitive reactance, which we wrote as X sub C. Okay, so <clears throat> you would think then that if somebody came up to you and said, hey, I want to know the voltage not between here and here, and not between there and there, but I want to know the voltage between here and, wait for it, here, that you could add them up. But that's not the case because they don't reach their peaks at the same time. So what we do is we say this resistor is changing the whole time. I guess I should get you some axes under which this can rotate, above which it can rotate, I mean. And we're saying that the Y component is the business end of the phaser. And so there is presently no voltage across the resistor and no current going through it. And then suddenly huge voltage and huge current and then no voltage and no current and then the voltage is the other direction so the current goes the other direction and it's just going around like this at uh, <clears throat> at a rate omega and the capacitor is doing a similar thing but it's doing it out of phase where the current through the capacitor is not occurring at the same time as the voltage through the capacitor current though by diarrhea current has to be the th same through the circuit so i'm going to set this down, I set the capacitor one down on top of the resistor one, boom, like that. And then I'm going to move these guys. And of course, the length of each of these voltages depends on, oh man, the length of each of these voltages depends on the value of the resistance and the value of the capacitance. So, oh, and I guess the value of omega also. So we need to draw these suckers. I'm gonna draw them at some instant in time. Let's say I draw the capacitive voltage here. And remember, V max for the capacitor is simply I max times the reactance of the capacitor. I should define reactance of the capacitor here. I think it was like one over omega times C. That says that the capacitor, well, if the capacitor is big, it doesn't have much reactance, but the capacitor is small, it has a lot of reactance. And if the frequency is big, the capacitor doesn't give you a lot of trouble in the circuit, doesn't have a lot of reactance. But if the frequency is small, then the capacitor will give you all kinds of trouble. So small capacitors give you trouble, and small frequencies give you trouble, but uh, in, as far as reactance, uh, big capacitance and big um, frequency, high frequency, won't give you much trouble. So there we've got the, the maximum voltage across the capacitor, and then at a right angle to it, remember we saw that? Boom, at a right angle to it, we've got the maximum voltage across the resistor. V max R, and we said that this is just I max times R. Okay, and well, if we want to know the total voltage, wait, this is supposed to be a right angle. This is the sloppiest right angle I've ever drawn. There, now it's perfect. And I'm going to say that we want to uh, add these two vectors. So we want to go out here like this, and we want to say that this vector is the overall voltage. Notice that if those guys are rotating together like that, then this overall voltage the total is going to be the vector sum of the maximum voltage on the capacitor and the maximum voltage on the resistor. But lo and behold, that's a right angle also, and so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We can say that the maximum voltage total is simply the screw of the maximum maximum the maximum volt. Wow, score that right. Maximum voltage on the resistor and the maximum voltage on the capacitor. Square them and add them up. This means that we can, well, see that inside here, maximum voltage on the resistor is simply V, oh no, what do we wanna say? We wanna say it's I max 
times ara, so it's i max square r square, and this guy over here is i max square times x c square, and I'm supposed to scroot the whole thing. You notice I can factor out an i max square, and it comes out of the scroot as a regular i max. So this is just i max times the scroot of r square plus x c square, and I'll remind you. Well, we can go. Dot, 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 dot. over here, this V max total then is also I max times the screw of, I'm just gonna plug in what X sub C is. That's R square plus one over omega square C square. Okay, so now I'm gonna identify this as looking a whole lot like Ohm's law. Look at this, V max total is i max total times this thing, which is sort of giving, uh, giving a difficulty towards um, letting current flow. And so I identify this thing. Here's my plan. Identify the screw of r square plus one over omega c quantity square to be something that we call impedance. It's a word that sounds a lot like resistance. It's something that's keeping something from happening. It's impeding the flow of current, but it's a little more subtle because it depends on frequency now. The impedance of this circuit depends on frequency and the resistance and the capacitance. And you will find that you get all kinds of really beautiful rules. For instance, V in a circuit max is I max times the impedance, just like Ohm's law, except if you calculate the impedance, you can use it as the resistance. Yay! Also, if you don't have a capacitor, you remember that impedance, well, we just discussed it, impedance is R square under the screw plus one over omega C square. If you don't have a capacitor, then you don't have any capacitance to worry about. And then this, oh, that would look like the capacitance is zero, so this is gonna be infinite. Oh gosh, no. What if? What if there is no capacitor? Then this term just disappears and the impedance becomes the resistance. Sure, but what if uh, we don't have any resistance? In that case, then the impedance simply becomes, these are all special cases, the, if there's no resistance, then the impedance just becomes one over omega C, because we're gonna scrut that thing right there. And one over omega C is just the capacitive reactance. So it's a combination of R and XC, but because they're at right angles to each other, we need to have them inside of scrut doing some PFAG. So the next thing we'll study is awesome. The next thing we're gonna study is called inductance. I mean, you've studied inductance already, but we're gonna bring inductance, we're gonna bring inductance into this impedance idea. And the final thing that I wanna point out is that in this circuit, oh, here we go, there's a circuit right here. In this circuit, we are alternately putting energy into the capacitor and taking energy out of the capacitor. So the total energy dissipated in this capacitor is zero. Capacitors don't dissipate energy. They'll store it and they'll give it back. The resistor, that sucker is dissipating energy, but because the voltage and the current are out of phase by 90 degrees, what was I able to do? I think I drew current here. This is current versus time, and I also want to draw the voltage as a function of time. Well, the voltage is zero when the current is maximum, and it's gonna start negative and go away positive and go away negative. See, because they are 90 degrees out of phase, we're sometimes getting positive power. We're, I'm gonna say that power is I times V. We're sometimes getting positive power, that's where they're both positive or where they're both negative, and then at other times we're getting negative power, where one's positive and one's negative. So you should work through that, because this was not a fair treatment of it, but I think you can also intuitively agree that a capacitor isn't going to waste any of your energy. It will be, this, this power supply will be delivering energy to the capacitor and then taking energy back out of the capacitor. During the cycle, it does that two times each. Bye.